So hi everyone and welcome to this first uh, part of a multiple video series on univariate forecasting in R. So we're going to be forecasting an economic variable, in this case inflation, uh, using the basic uh, univariate forecasting models, which are the AR, the MA, the ARIMA, and the SARIMA. So let's get to it. This video will detail some of the basic steps and the diagnostics and the other videos will detail the forecasting part. So uh, I hope that you can follow along as we do this and I'll try to do it in a manner that's very simple, very approachable, and very intuitive. So the first step for us is to load the required packages. So for this case, we need the tidyverse package to load the data sets and we need these four packages so that we can execute the different commands that we're going to do. Uh, so these are the Orca Forecast, T-Series, and TS-Studio. So if you don't have them installed yet, you can run all of these and it will install it for you. You just need an adequate internet connection. But in my case, I already have them installed, so I don't need to reinstall. I just need to call these required packages using the library command. So uh, what that does is it just tells R that you want to use the selected library. So uh, I'm going to load them. Okay. Then first step is I need to load my data set. So my data set is on inflation rate. And so I'll load it inflation. I'll call it inflation because it's inflation. Then I'm going to use uh, the, a reader uh, command, which is read underscore CSV, which reads CSV files. And to choose the file, I'll just invoke this command file.choose. And it should open up a dialog box. Then um, the file is saved in my desktop, which is inflation rate lecture. Um, again, all files, uh, including the code and the data set, will be linked in the description box below. So we have that one. So we loaded the data set. So see, it's here in the environment tab. Then say we want to view the observations, let's say head. So head will display the first few rows of the data set, so inflation. And we see that it's inflation rate from the year 2000 until uh, 2020, in particular April 2020. So we want to use that span to be able to forecast inflation in the future. So let's see how many periods we have. So we can do that by doing this command and row inflation. So in this case, we have 244 periods. So the first step is we need to declare our time series variable. And if you notice the data set, okay, the data set just contains one variable, which is, inf uh, which is rate and that's the inflation rate. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn that a variable into a series that we can use our different models on. So I'll name that series in. Okay, so that's the name of my series. And uh, TS is the command uh, to put make it a time series object. And then that object okay, is coming from the data set inflation. So that's the name of my data set. And it's the rate variable there. That rate variable starts, okay, at 2000, okay, at the year 2000, first month, January, the fifth day. So if you look at the data set, it's that. And this is monthly data. So the frequency is equal to 12. So uh, we have that, then we enter and we should see that our object is there. Okay, so uh, let's plot the series. So plotting this uh, time series object. So we can plot it using the autoplot command. So autoplot, okay, so autoplot int, okay, so that's the command. Uh, then let's add a title to the graph, so gg title. I'll call it uh, inflation rate of the Philippines, because it's the Philippines' is inflation rate. And then, um, so uh, let's add a label, okay, so that's plus labs, okay, x. The X label is going to be time and the Y axis is going to be a rate. Okay. And this should produce a graph and we have there our inflation rate of the Philippines. So uh, the spikes will correspond to significant events likely in the inflation history of the country. So uh, now we plotted it. So something that you may want to do is generate some, generate some uh, descriptive stats statistics so we have uh we can use the summary command so summary in then we can get the summary so 
the mean inflation rate for the period, which is year 2000 until 2020, is around 3.955%, so not, uh, not too bad. And we have the highest inflation rate being sometime, I think this is 2009 or 2008, being at 10.5%. So that's quite a lot. So one uh, thing to look at is um, just to try and identify the series is to look at the uh, ACFs, look at the autocorrelation function and the partial autocorrelation function. So we can do that case uh, we can view the acf and the pacf like this so the command to view the acf is gg acf so it's so r kind of predicted that and we want to create the autocorrelation function plot or the correlogram for inflation so let's add a title so gg title okay uh acf of uh inflation okay so we have that and this is the autocorrelation function of inflation. So I want you to notice that the series, okay, we can see a geometric decay here, a geometric decay. And it's a sign that uh, generally um, that process of inflation or that series of inflation is, uh, is probably leaning towards an AR process. And it's because uh, the ACF of an AR process is geometrically decreasing, similar to an, uh, an ARM or an ARIMA process is geometrically decaying. With an MA, it's usually an abrupt cutoff with the ACF. So let's see the PACF. So that's GGPACF. Okay, so very similar command. Then let's add a title, GG title, uh, PACF of inflation. And we get this. So notice uh, here, Okay, at the first lag is significant, so we can see an immediate cutoff from the first to the second lag, uh, which suggests that this is more indeed an AR process than an MA. And you can see that uh, the first two lags are significant as well as the 13th lag, okay, for some reason. So uh, I, I think if I were to guess, since the first two lags are significant, maybe the autoregressive lag order is two. So we'll have to check later when we do the modeling part. So just uh, to see how to difference, okay, so uh, since some of the lags are significant here in the ACF and the PACF, it suggests that the series isn't really stationary. So let's difference the series just to check it out. So difference the series. Fortunately, R has a function for that, which is um, diff. So I'll create an object called DINF, which is essentially difference inflation. And I'm going to difference my inflation variable, which is diff, uh, the command, and then inf. And that creates an object dinf, which is different inflation. Note it's one observation less because we differenced it. Then um, we can look at the, at the ACF and the PACF as well. Okay, so let's look at that. And so let's just change this to D and then D. Then let's add uh, just so that we have a guide difference. Okay, then let's copy that here. Copy and then let's paste here. So let's see the ACF and the PACF graph of the difference value. So we can see now we see a very similar trend in that um, it's a geometric decay. And uh, for the PACF, we also see this similar uh, sort of geometric decay, but with the similar cutoff elements that we see. So likely it's going to be AR driven. And we still see that there are still some lags that are significant, but uh, we'll deal with that some other time. So uh, lastly, for this video, let's decompose the series. So uh, a, good, uh, a good way to analyze the elements of the series is to decompose the series okay and we do that using the command uh, ts underscore decompose and we're gonna decompose inflation and we're gonna use the base type which is additive and then um, let's do show line equals true okay so that's just a base command and we can see the decomposition of times here so note the graph, uh, this TS underscore decompose is from the TS Studio package and it uses Plotly. So you can see it's very interactive. So uh, when you scroll over, the values will be there. And we can see that we see some seasonal component here, which is actually a signal for us later that when we try the models, I can tell you in advance now uh, that we will have some seasonal component in the optimal forecast because we see it clearly here. Then we also have uh, the trend. So generally, 
probably translationary here, uh, and the random component. So those are the basic steps in univariate forecast, at least the first steps that we should do. And in the next videos, we'll continue where we left off. So thank you.